I heard some, some lovely things here, really. It's always such a joy to hear um, when, it just, just shows when, you know, good work and, and intelligent work has been put into the preparation. I don't mean anything um, underhand by saying intelligent work, but you really do have to think about what you do, what you're doing, and how you're communicating the music to your listener. Even if the, the piece really gets out of the environment where it's just you and your teacher, we still have to imagine how it is to play this for an audience. The imagined audience, imagined audience is always there. And I think this is the thing which in this terrible time with the pandemic that um, us performers have, have really been struggling with is that we need that feedback from an audience. We really need flesh and blood to listen to us. I, for one, cannot play for a microphone and hope that it's going to move somebody. <laughs> it's, it doesn't work for me. I suppose I'll have to change. But um, at the moment, I still feel that rapport with the live audience is, is crucial. So one has to imagine that as part of your, part of your preparation. <clears throat> um, there were some lovely things, uh, if I may single a few out. Uh, the piece by Telemann from the um, De Kleine Karma Music. A very beautiful, very sprightly performance. And um, I thought that even if the word rhetoric hasn't yet been used, the, the way that the cadences were played um, in a very, very musical way, and in such a way that one could understand the structure, one could understand the rhetorical structure of the piece. Um, so that's something which I think you can have a, a nice, um, invigorating conversation with, with your teacher. Um, very well done. Just, just a few little things, I'm just going to focus on one. And it's, it's a trap that nearly everybody falls into. 
in a faster tempo, when you have a rhythm such as dum ti di dum ti di dum ti di dum, it is so easy to play it literally. And the effect is that in this case, it's one quaver and two semiquavers repeated. We played well, three times, in fact, in the bar because the piece is in triple time. Um, but the quaver, the eighth note, appears a little shorter, and the sixteenths appear a little fatter. And it's one of the hardest things to get right. But um, it's not; these are not my words, and I've I've mentioned them many times to people in the past, and they, have, they look at me and they think. Where do you come from? But I didn't say this. This comes from Leopold Mozart. Um, having said that, I must just change that it's not W.A. Mozart, it was Leopold Mozart in the report. Um, Leopold Mozart had this, this thing about if you want to get passages like this with these sort of rhythms to be convincing, it's a good idea to imagine the longer notes slightly longer and the shorter notes slightly shorter. So instead of da 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 da, but dum da da dum ti di dum da da da. It's a very fine balance, and it's almost impossible to notate it. You have to learn to feel it. And as I say, with with um, certain kinds of music, especially French music, you know it's right when you can smell the perfume. <laughs> um, it's a tricky thing, but when you get that right, suddenly everything falls into place. So just, just be aware of that. And it's a small, I'm not picking on a very small little thing, but um, otherwise the performance was, was really, really quite excellent. Um, the last piece that I heard, I just want to use that as an example. Uh, it was very rhythmically played. Just felt that here the tempo could be a little bit quicker. This is the Muscat Rumble. Um, with all these da 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 sort of a rag, rag time rhythm. Um, if one gets the piece really well controlled and then takes it a little bit faster, it, it will really suddenly come across on a, on a different level. Uh, and just some technical points, I think to be very careful especially with the notes on the treble recorder below C2. In other words, those that are mostly operated by the right hand. Be careful that there's always this fear, oh, I'm not gonna be heard because they're quiet and then there's too much air and they're just on the verge of cracking. So be careful then, they need to be clear. Accept what your instrument can do and don't force it. Your, your accompanist will be sympathetic to that. Um, and in this, unlike the piece I mentioned earlier, the, the green sleeves to a ground where um, the, the articulations as printed are a little bit overdone, a little bit over the top. Here, in such a piece as this musket rumble, I think you really have to play them very literally. Um, a lot of this, the, the, the sort of the effect of the, 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 the sort of the jauntiness of the um, the, the, the ragtime rhythm come out with ya ya ta ti ti tum ba 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 So when they ask the cartoons, try and make them a little bit more literal. And especially if you have, for instance, seven notes underneath a slur, di da da da. It's so much more effective if you really do it literally. Um, yeah, just small things um, to think about, but. In all cases, I felt excellent preparation. Um, and this is what it's about. It's about getting all the planets in alignment and getting yourself in alignment with them and then knowing that you have to make this recording and then today's the day. And this is, this is so much part about what, what we do with, with, with music. It's time management. And when we learn that and we instill that in a joyful way, a positive way with our young players, then I always believe in there will be a future. Um, beautiful things can come from that. But thank you very much.